Anunnaki artifacts. Why is the Anunnaki reality being kept from humanity? Have you ever wondered why schools teach so little of anything about the world's first advanced civilization? Are the Anunnaki artifacts being hidden? Zechariah Sitchin translated 14 Tablets of Anki, the complete history of the Anunnaki. Sitchin shocked the historical and archaeological world after he published his series of books on Anunnaki gods who arrived from planet Nibiru, planet X, around 445,000 years ago. And according to him, these ancient astronauts touched down on one, in one of Earth's seas and established Eridu, home in the far away, that's what it means. The author's translation of 14 tablets of Enki explains the history of the Anunnaki civilization and their full-fledged purpose for the visit to Earth. The tablets are the account of Enki and Anunnaki from the planet called Nibiru. He was the firstborn son of Anu, the king of the planet Nibiru. Nibiru is supposed to circle the sun every 3,600 years. Enki claimed, as per Sitchin's translation in these tablets, have come to Earth to mine gold for their home planet Nibiru. The gold was needed to repair the atmosphere of their planet. They needed mine workers, so Enki created humans to Earth on Earth uh, in their image. Though there is a lot of skeptics in the story of uh, Anunnaki, numerous scholars and theologians have begun to recognize that the biblical tales of creation and of Adam and Eve, the Garden of Eden, the Deluge, the Tower of Babel, are in fact product of ancient texts written down millennia before in ancient Mesopotamia by the ancient Sumerians. The first tablet of Lord Enki. Chapter 1 1. The tablet explains what happens to be to us an atomic war on earth between the Anunnaki. The evil wind spoke of seems to be a radioactive cloud that kills everyone in its path, gods and mankind. One very interesting part is it says it's the worst thing that happened since the deluge, the flood. And chapter 1 2 of the first tablet of Lord Enki. This tablet talks about long ago on the Anunnaki's home planet Nibiru. They seem to think they came to life from what our evolutionists believe as a primordial soup. Although we know it cannot happen, they think it can. And it mentions the planet's thick atmosphere and vegetation. It cycles around the sun with the hot and cold periods. During the cold periods, the planet's inner heat keeps Nibiru warm. Disputes started that ended in the use of what we consider atomic bombs. It devastated their planet, then peace was made and a kingship was established for the entire planet. Chapter 1-3, the tablet tells of the kingship lineage on Nibiru. It tells of the king's marriages, of even marrying his brothers and daughters. And chapter 1-4, the tablet appears that uh, Anunnaki's home planet is having a trouble with a breach in their atmosphere. The answer is to place finely powered gold in the upper atmosphere to do a repair. This decision was not until a fight amongst them ended in the killing of the king. Brothers killing like brothers uh, like Cain and Abel. Chapter 1-5, the tablet contains the Anunnaki council, deciding the Anunnaki that killing the king, of which he is a distant relative, should be given the throne, and there is not even any punishment considered for killing the king. Chapter 1-6, this tablet details how the king tries to heal the atmosphere of the planet by detonating atomic bombs in volcanoes. It does no good and the Anunnaki are de displeased. The next person in line for the throne challenges the king and defeats him in a wrestling match and the king escapes the Anunnaki by jumping in a spaceship and heading towards the earth. The second tablet of Lord Enki tells of the defeated king's escape from Nibiru with a plan to go to snow-covered Earth. The spaceship he took had atomic bombs on it, and his plan was to blow a path through the, the asteroid belt, which had kept the Anunnaki from going to Earth. Chapter 2-2 describes the defeated king's arrival on Earth. Chapter 2-3, two, 
the tablet tells of the defeated king's first days on earth and finding the air, food, and fish good also found traces of the gold the Nibiru planet needs for its repair of the atmosphere and he calls a new king of Nibiru and wants to make a deal. The third tablet of Lord Enki, chapter 3-1, the tablet tells of the defeated king's attempts to bribe the new king with his knowledge of the gold on earth and have his kingship reinstated. Chapter 3-2, the portion, has the ending of negotiations. A team will be sent to earth to see if there is gold, and if there is gold, the defeated king will have another wrestling match with a new king for the throne. Chapter 3-3, the tablet has the Anunnaki traveling to Earth. They briefly stop on Mars for water. Their spacecraft apparently runs on water. Then they proceed to Earth and land there. Chapter 3-4, this tells of the first six days on Earth of the advanced team of Anunnaki. There's plenty of food, water, fish, and animals. Chapter 3-5, the portion describes the Anunnaki team leader declaring on the seventh day, a day of rest, metals were processed from the waters. At the day, month, and year were given their names. Chapter 3-6. This portion of the tablet tells us about searching and finding gold, but not in great quantities. The remaining atomic bombs on the defeated king spacecraft were taken out of the spacecraft and hidden in a cave. They are not to be used again to make any a way through the asteroid belt. The Anunnaki team members leaves Earth to take the first basketfuls of gold to Nibiru. The fourth tablet, chapter 4-1. The tablet starts off with a spaceship with the first baskets of gold arriving. Word was received from Earth the large deposits of gold are underground. A high-ranking Anunnaki placed in charge of the Earth operations. He departed Nibiru and arrived on Earth. Chapter 4-2 portion of the tablet has a new king on Nibiru coming to Earth to see for himself where the gold is underground. A plan is developed to see who of his sons will go back to Nibiru and which one will stay in command operations on Earth. This is indeed to be done because of rivalries between his two sons due to both being eligible for the next kingship. Chapter 4-3. This portion has the new king and his two sons drawing lots to see what jobs they will perform. When decisions are announced, the defeated king reinstates, restates his case for the second wrestling match for the throne. The wrestling match ends with the new king again beating the already once defeated king. After the end of the match, the defeated king bites off the male members of the new king and swallows it. He's tied and bound. While the new king is healing, the belly of the defeated king swells from the semen of the king's male member. The court convenes and is decided what to do with the defeated king and the new king's son wants to do away with him. Chapter 4-4. This portion of the tablet has a new king deciding to place a defeated king which is expected to die from swallowing the new king's male member on Mars in exile while he dies. The new king returns to Nibiru and tells of all that happened of the plans to harvest the gold on earth the plans include making relay stations of Mars and possibly the Moon. The Earth is again referenced as Eden. Chapter 4-5 This portion describes the building of specific Earth movement equipment, spaceships and rocks, rockets on Nibiru for use on Earth. The Earth shorter cycles and atmosphere affects the Anunnaki. A group of more Anunnaki, including some women, that have healing skills leave Nibiru for Earth. They stop on Mars to see if the defeated king has died and to start a relay station there, and the rest of the group continues to Earth. Chapter 5-1, the tablet starts with the latest group arriving on Earth. The son that has been put in command of the support for gold harvesting greets his sister, which is one of the healers. They fly off to their king's son's living quarters, which he built on the mountain. They express love for one another and discuss their son and Nibiru wanting to come to Earth. This is brother and sister. They fly back to Eden and he flies her around telling her of his plans. More and more Nunaki arrive on Earth from Nibiru. Chapter 5-2 There are now 300 Nunaki on Mars and 600 on Earth. 
This portion of the tablet is more of the same ignorant decisions and immorality by some of the Anunnaki. Chapter 5.3 The uh, young female leader is brought before the seven judges and she tells them she's pregnant. They ask her if she will take the king's son as her husband and she says she will. Chapter 5.4 The commander of Mars is, show, is shown the workings on earth. He secretly des desires to be king, so he steals the tablets of destiny, destinies, knowing, unknowing their true scope and power, from Eden. He believes he cannot be defeated while he has the tablets of destinies, but he is defeated and senses to death. He died on the 25th star, Shar, 25th Shar. The Shar is believed to be 3,600 year, Earth years, the length of Nibiru orbit around the sun. 25 shards would place his ex execution at approximately 90,000 years after the Anunnaki came to Earth. So Zechariah Sitchin translated these 14 tablets. There's a lot of information there if you want to read. And uh, obviously this is all Sumerian legend. But there are also similar legends throughout all the cultures around the world. China, Korea, Japan, ancient Egypt, ancient Greece, and even the... Uh, Anu, the uh, friends from the stars, according to the Native American legends. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. And this is on Collective Spark by Deshi News Post. Thank you. Finally, support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.